I'm Graham Elliott. I work for the Department of Conservation and I'm a Principal Advisory Scientist. And, oh, well, I've been working on birds forever. I, I studied mohua in the early 80s. My mohua that I was studying actually did really, really well for the first three years that I was working on them. And then in the last year, we'd had a, a beech mast and a, a rodent plague and a stoke plague in the forest that I was working in. And I lost half of the females were killed during that summer and then nesting success was appalling. And that kind of got me all fired up about, well, trying to look after more and other forest birds. And you could sort of see what you might have to do to make things better for them. And I suppose I've been stuck with that in my working life ever since. So this is Nelson Lakes National Park and Rotorite, Lake Rotorite behind us. Um, this is kind of special to me because I worked for years here on Kias, mainly up on that range along there. And at, here's where we kind of first learned that Kias, like so many other forest birds, suffer from these um, predator plagues that we get every time there's a beech mast. So there's kind of about um, six and a half million hectares of native forest left in the country, of which about two thirds of it's got some beech trees in it and then about half of that is almost nothing but beech forest. So in a mast year there's all the seed on the ground and it's there's masses of it. Um, rats and mice normally don't breed in the winter because there's nothing to eat but because they've got heaps of food they're able to breed all winter and the numbers just go through the roof. And then stoats only breed once a year but in a year when there's lots of tuck around, they can produce up to 14 babies. So the rats and mice have risen to these incredibly high levels. The stoats have rolled into the system, and from then for the next six months or so, it's just slaughter. But in other parts of New Zealand, there's, there's um, a much greater variety of, of tree species, particularly in the north. So if you go to the north, there's a huge diversity of forest trees producing seeds all the time, and those forests are packed full of rats and mice and stoats and ferrets and cats and all, you name it, they're there all the time. So we end up with these two really quite contrasting situations with these forests which have plagues of rats and mice and, and stoats and in between times things are pretty good. Um, and then you get these northern forests where things are pretty bad nearly all the time because you've got a high number of predators all the time. And our forest wildlife is um, going down the gurgler there. We're on top of um, Sanana Range, right on the edge of Nelson Lakes National Park. That's all of that stuff over there. And we're looking down that way to, to Nelson. Um, so you can sort of, down here, you can see all this gentle rolling country, which has got, we, we've got a big network of traps in there and there's roads around it and there's a power line through it. So it's nice and accessible, great place for running traps efficiently and easily. And up here, We've got all this steep, rugged country, which is impossible to trap. It's just too steep and awful. And you really can't put millions of traps out in that sort of country. You'd kill people trying to service them. And if you think about the amount of effort it would take to do it, so Nelson Lakes National Park's 100,000 hectares. If we were to do stoat trapping out there, we'd need to put out about 10,000 stoat traps. And each one of those would be 100 metres apart, something like 100 person days to go and check all those traps which is kind of maybe doable, but that's just stoats. And for rats, we need 10 times that density of traps. It's just not possible, and you'd break people. So you can do this low country stuff really well with traps, and it's close to people, it's just great. But you just can't kid yourself that we're going to trap these large backcountry areas. If you wanted a tool to use in backcountry New Zealand for um, large-scale pest control, you'd want it to be delivered from the air, you'd want it to work better on mammals than it does on birds, and you'd want it to be short-lived, because you'd want to drop the thing out there, kill all the baddies, and then stop working so it didn't kill anything else. And that's exactly what 1080 does. So it's more toxic to mammals than it is to birds by heaps, and it doesn't last long, because as soon as it gets wet, the poison gets washed out of the, the baits, and the baits become non-toxic quite quickly. And of course, the um, the 1080 is only at 0.15% in the baits, so there's, there's not a lot, lot in there. And the baits are designed so that if a, a rat eats a whole bait, that he'll die. But, you know, the concentration is such that if a bird takes a tiny fragment, it's unlikely to die anyway. For something like here, there are a few birds killed, but we've carefully studied care to see what benefits we can give care through controlling predators. 
And we know that um, care when you do nothing and, and when the population is declining, the nesting success is only about 40%, which means that most of the nests are being killed every time and they're being killed by possums and stoats. So even if you get a few deaths um, through 1080, they're better off with um, big 1080 programs over the back country than they are if you just leave them alone. And of course you've got to remember with Kia, that the trapping thing really comes into its own because you say, oh, let's trap all the Kia habitat and it's all along the main divide of the South Island. It's all this horrible sort of country. We can't do it with traps. There's another good story from up in Tongariro uh, with the main aim of benefiting Kiwi and, and Fio. And it's been a fantastic success. Um, in the years when we haven't used 1080, are you getting about one or two Kiwi chicks out of 10 are getting through. And in the best of the 1080 operations, we've been getting eight out of 10 of the Kiwi chicks through. Similar story for Fio, it goes from 10% to 87% if you do good pest control. For Mohua, it goes from 56% to 89%. And from Rifleman, it goes from 29% to close to 100%. Since 2014, we've treated about 2.4 million hectares of native forest on public conservation land with 1080. And then you can add a little bit on for, for trapping. So we're doing a reasonable job of looking after our native wildlife on about a quarter of the public conservation land. But in the rest of it, it's just still declining the birds are being preyed upon without, without any pest control. But if we want the wildlife to thrive throughout the country, we're going to have to do it everywhere and we're going to have to do it to a really, really high standard. So what role can you and I play in this? The stuff we, around where we live and in the forests and wetlands near where we live, we can do ourselves. So run the traps, run the poison and bait stations. And if we do that, the fear will be pumping out babies and the robins will be making millions of chicks. And that's what it's going to take to make New Zealand a place where it's just bursting with wildlife and that's what it's going to take if we ever want to be predator free.